Phillips, and this is Google Current. Searches are up this week for banana bags like this little cutie from Nordstrom, but let's breeze right past that because there is some serious online banana action we need to get to. Apparently, the world revolves around bananas and I've been totally out of the loop. I mean, I do eat a PB and banana sandwich every morning, much like Elvis's fave, except I forgo the bacon and the honey, but oh my gosh, check this out. At BananaGuard.com, you can buy protection for your banana so it doesn't get bruised or smashed. They even have one that glows in the dark. And they have competition from the banana loving folks at BananaBunker.com who offer the clear version. But if you really want to protect your banana, check out the banana flavored condom on eBay. Wow. And speaking of banana flavor, kind of, ooh, there are like a bazillion banana recipes online, like banana pancakes, yum, and the classic banana split, not to be confused with the classic wrestling move of the same name. And my favorite, Bananas Foster, where you set bananas on fire like this. Or if you're an idiot, like this. It's <laughs> not gonna go, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, God! Oh, oh God! Oh my god, take it off! Take it off, take it off! Hmm. Now, if you love bananas, get yourself a banana cell phone cover, have yourself a pint of banana beer, take a quiz titled, What Kind of Banana Are You? I'm a banana bread because I'm sweet yet complicated. Or play this fun little banana game. Good times. But if you really love bananas, you need to visit the Banana Museum. Seriously. It's a little place in Washington State run by Annie, Anna Banana, who has accumulated more than 4,000 banana items, including a Chiquita Banana Kids writing toy thing. And hey, friends down under, I know it's a long way, so you guys can just visit your local banana attraction, the Giant Banana, which claims to be probably the most photographed object in Australia. Yeah, probably more than the Sydney Opera House or Ayers Rock. Hmm. Aussies apparently love their bananas. They have a kids TV show called Bananas and Pajamas. It's about two giant childlike bananas that are good friends and companions. Alrighty then. And if you love bananas that much, you have something in common with Banana George. He's the ambassador of barefoot water skiing, as seen in this photo showing him and his statue. I can't really tell which one's real. And I bet Banana George would love this video called Banana Man. Banana man me want the done Give me double and a bonus one Give me more for all me friends This banana flow will never end Do you want a banana? Feel it down and go mm -mm -mm -mm. Do you want a banana? Oh, sorry. I had a craving. Actually, several of the top banana searches on Google are for banana calories. Answer, one large banana, about 170. And finally, on the site 43 things that allows people to list what they really want to accomplish in life, like, you know, find true love or live like I'm dying, four people want to eat a banana, while only two want to eat an apple. Keep searching, Google Current, we'll be back in 30. Do you want a banana? and welcome to Google Current. Now, President Bush is always one of Google's top searches, and this week was no exception. Having reached the third anniversary of the war in Iraq, he took the opportunity to sum up the general picture. The terrorists and insurgents had basically seized control of Talafa. They sought to divide Talafa's many ethnic and religious groups. Forces there in Talafa weren't able to maintain order. The terrorists threatened to murder the families of Talafa's police. The same happened in Talafer schools. Talafer, Talafer is Talafer, Talafer, Talafer. Sorry, I was here for the Iraq speech. Is that next door? Now, for all of us apparently not in the know, Talafer is a city of 200,000 in northern Iraq that is being touted as a success story. Unfortunately, Baghdad is where most of the violence is and where five million people call home. Maybe they're uh, planning on moving everyone from Baghdad to Talafer. Problem solved. Yay. 
During the speech, Bush discussed in great detail the tactics of the terrorist in Tel Afer. They sought to divide Tel Afer's many ethnic and religious groups and forged an alliance that they skillfully used propaganda to foment hostility. They exploited a weak economy to recruit young men to their cause. Wow, they sure sound organized. But no worries, I'm sure we had an elaborate strategy to stop them from doing all that bad stuff. Our strategy at the time was to stay after the terrorists and keep them on the run. Keep them on the run? Now, I don't mean a nitpick, but their strategy has fomenting and forging and exploiting. I think our objective is clear. We need better verbs. Can't we exterminate, galvanize, and vitalize anyone? The Iraqi government and the coalition adopted a new approach called clear, hold, and build. Well, it's a start, but we need reinforcements. We should immediately airlift a unit of battle-hardened English majors with combat the sources. Bush did explain what makes terrorists so hard to catch. An enemy which, you know, doesn't move in flotillas or battalions. Well, I don't know about battalions, but I don't think they move in flotillas because they aren't the Spanish Armada. And this isn't the 16th century. Flotilla was the only unusual word used by the president. When asked about the dispute over warrantless wiretaps, the president had this to say. He's talking about the Terrence surveillance program that was created quite a kerfluffle in the press, and I owe an, op I owe an explanation. Kerfluffle. Now, the word may be new to you, but don't confuse it with the more common kerfuffle. A kerfuffle is a loud dispute over a minor matter, whereas we're guessing that kerfuffle is a loud dispute over a minor violation of the Constitution, allegedly. Throughout the speech, the president showed that he can truly communicate with the American people in their own language. These are like uh, totalitarian fascists. These are like uh, totalitarian fascists. Oh my God, totally. This one time I met this guy and he was like a total fascist and I was like, F F. And that is the American way. You mess with us, you'll be looking at the business end of a military grade, whatever. Keep searching. Google Current returns in 30. Hey, I'm King of Phillips, and this is Google Current. Right now, I'm standing in the Ninth Ward in New Orleans. This is one of the areas that was hardest hit by Katrina six months ago. And to tell you that it was six months ago is almost absurd, because if you look around and see the rubble that is still here six months later, I could tell you that it was yesterday and it would be easy to believe. And what you're seeing on camera right now is simply the tip of the iceberg because we're standing in block after block after block of neighborhood that is devoid completely of any kind of life. Maybe a stray cat every now and then and that's it. I can tell you that I saw a washing machine in a tree or that looking in this rubble, you can see car seats for kids, children's toys, and people's personal pictures. It's really hard to imagine that this was once a neighborhood in one of the most vibrant cities in the United States. stark contrast, the French Quarter is full of what you'd expect it to be. Beads, booze, people having a great time, life going on. It's almost like Katrina never happened or it certainly didn't dampen anybody's spirits here. Actually, if you never left this part of the city that's being called the bubble because it's so unaffected. You would never know that just a little ways away, parts of the city are completely destroyed. Keep searching. Google Current will be back in 30.
King of Phillips and welcome to Google Current. Now one thing people are always searching for online are lyrics and sometimes it really makes no sense why. Now around Valentine's Day lots of people were searching for I'd do anything for you lyrics which pretty much confirmed that your V-Day was going to suck. At other times though it makes perfect sense why certain songs are hot online. The guiltiest of guilty pleasures American Idol. Now this week searches were up for What About Love, Wave on Wave, I'm the Only One, Starry Starry Night, and Unwritten. All songs performed on the show. But people aren't looking to buy the songs or listen to the songs, they're looking for the lyrics to the songs. Which makes me think that people must be getting ready for a big night of karaoke. You know, so you can look away from the screen when you sing to show that you know all the words and look really, really cool. That is totally my karaoke move, but only to you've lost that loving feeling. It's the only one I know. Now, the best part of karaoke, though, is you don't even have to leave the house. Just pick up one of those karaoke machines, invite the neighbors, and presto, insta party. You know what they say, the family that YMCA's together stays together. But then I thought, maybe these lyric searchers are practicing for their webcam lip syncing debut. Now nah, we've seen it before, we'll see it again, and we love it every single time. Good old lip syncing, also known as faking it. Millie Vanilli did it, so did Ashley Simpson, although hers was apparently the result of acid reflux syndrome. <clears throat> yeah. And who didn't get that email with those guys in the Yao Ming jerseys doing a priceless rendition of Backstreet Boys Want It That Way? For old time's sake! I the real rock star is the guy working away at his computer through the whole thing. And the latest crop of webcam serenades comes out of Texas, the state that brings us everything bigger, better, and clearly with lots more passion. Here's a little clip that's made the rounds on blogs like Deadspin and Bebo Sports, Aggies Forward, Chris Walker, and friends lip syncing to Total Eclipse of the Heart. But at least you think these college boys are merely one hit wonders, let me assure you that is not the case. And then there is the gem of their collection, complete with newspaper tossing as any good webcam lip syncing video should be. Don't own that yacht in or that mansion in Del Mar. Don't live on top of the world. And the best part, when not frolicking in newspapers, these guys prefer to perform shirtless. And that is just the way I like my athletes. I mean, I've uh, <clears throat> heard they look all right that way. Anyway, moving on. The moral of the story is, if you want to avoid future embarrassment, we highly recommend putting down the camera when it comes to all instances of singing or sex. And uh, if you want to keep PETA from knocking down your door, I wouldn't film bathing your pet hedgehog either, especially when it looks like you just kind of threw him into the bathtub. Keep searching. Google Current returns in 30. I'm King of Phillips and this is Google Current. Searches this week shot up for two of the best American entertainers of all time, David Hasselhoff and Gary Coleman. Now in case you've never seen the famous internet picture, do a search on Google for David Hasselhoff and Gary Coleman. For some reason, that brings you to this pic, which really has nothing to do with either of them. But that same search does take you to this pic of the two, which has everything to do with being totally awesome. Now we have no idea why people are searching for it this week since it's actually been around for quite a while. A blog called the Commonwealth Conservative even held a caption contest for the photo. My two faves, contrary to the writings of many historians, racial reconciliation started early in Virginia. And after years of being huge in Germany, Hasselhoff, his career in ruins, came to grips that he is now only huge next to Gary Coleman. 
The Hoff is also huge on Amazon. Almost a thousand people have written five star reviews for his album, looking for best of David Hasselhoff import. Here's one. Sell your house, sell your kids, sell everything you own and dedicate your life entirely to David Hasselhoff and this album. You won't regret it. And of course, the Hoff also brought us this internet phenomenon. And I don't use the word phenomenon lightly. I'm hooked on a feeling. Woo! <clears throat> that video competes only with this one called Pizzazz for best use of green screen technology in a viral video. Okay, so that had nothing to do with the Hoff, but this picture definitely does. It's the David Hasselhoff soap dispenser. Hmm. Now, if you want more, there's a blog devoted to the Hoff where you can find pics like the on Hoff switch. But where does all this leave number two in the famous picture du jour, Gary Coleman? Well, while he's not as big online or in real life as the Hoff, he still gets some love. Grudgematch.com, a now defunct site that speculates on who would win different celeb throwdowns, said that Coleman would have destroyed Webster in a no holds barred match. Now that is something I'd pay to see. Keep searching, Google Current will be back in 30. <laughs>in England. Now, we're here exploring this amazing city and while we're here, we decided to see what it is that Londoners are Googling. What we found is that the locals are searching for a whole bunch of stuff that most of us in the States have no idea what it even is. Like chavs, hunters, and dogging. So what we're gonna do is have a little bit of a vocabulary lesson. Now, in October, more people searched the term chavs than they were searching for Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez. What is a chavs? Everything fake, big yeah, fake gold earrings, big fake Louis Vuitton bag. Tracksuit bottom. Tracksuit bottom. Like someone, yeah, from New Jersey, living <laughs> in New York. Now the word chav has blown up in the last few years and the internet offers websites that tell you how to spot chav, chav jokes, and even tests to see if maybe you are a chav. Now the Manchester Guardian newspaper called chav the buzzword of 2004. Next word, punter. But what is a punter? Anything to do with someone going into the shop and purchasing something. So a punter online is someone who is shopping for, well, sex. And London searches were sky high for something called Punternet, so naturally got curious and had to check it out. Seems that Punternet is a site that rates ladies of the night. And then there's dogging. Dogging is where if you're having you... sex in a car yes. and then people drive up and watch and you and they fiddle. They flash their lights and then you flash your lights and that means that it's like an bit, initiation yeah. and you can go watch them have sex. Wow, that actually sounds really, really creepy. Now, dogging is mostly a British phenomenon that became hugely popular when Stan Collimore, a famous British soccer star, admitted that he takes part. And there are tons of websites out there dedicated to telling you where to go and where not to go because of cops couples wanting to meet up, and even etiquette tips and rules of dogging. One of the top five searches containing the word slang on all of Google is for Cockney rhyming slang. Now basically the way it works is like this. You take an English word and then you replace it with another English word that rhymes. So for example, book becomes fish hook, which then just becomes fish. We say going peak tong, which means when things go wrong. When the guy goes into the pub and goes, oh, can I have an Nelson Mandela? Guy comes up, gives him a pint of Stella. Okay, now I'm totally confused, but if you want some more information, go to cockneyrhymingslang.co.uk. And of course, keep searching. Google Current, we'll be back in 30.
Kinga Phillips, and this is Google Current. I'm off the Gulf Coast where Hurricane Katrina struck six months ago. And while the hurricane recovery and cleanup effort is far from over, no one doubts its impact on this region or the historical significance of the hurricane. Now already you can buy the Times Picayune and the New Orleans paper 28th and 29th of August editions for $200. And while the first of those editions was coming out on August 28th, only hours before Katrina made landfall, this is what the country's top searches looked like. People wanted to know more about Katrina, about New Orleans, and about those tracking the storm. On Monday, August 29th at 7 a.m. Central Time, Katrina came ashore as a Category 3 storm. That day, the nation's searches began to change. Over the next week, as the scale of the disaster became painfully apparent, certain terms popped into the search list to indicate what was going on. As the situation got worse, searches also went up for levees, looters, New Orleans webcams, White House, and even martial law. People are also looking for Red Cross to either give help or to receive it. And with searches, people think about themselves, and apparently a lot of people were thinking about their travel plans because searches also went up for Mardi Gras. And others were thinking about their checkbooks because searches also went up for gas prices. The day Katrina hit, FEMA was barely in the top 100 searches. But over the next week, it would jump way up. As we searched for FEMA online, the people of the Gulf Coast were also searching for FEMA to bring them aid. A recent congressional report said FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security failed in preparing for, responding to, and coordinating the response to Katrina. And since then, FEMA has become one of the most despised government agencies. And Americans are expressing their feelings for FEMA the best way they know how, with t-shirts and bumper stickers. It's hard to forget the images that we've seen of what Katrina did down here. But please remember the effects are not over and they won't be for a long time. So if you can, please visit redcross.org to donate financially or habitat.org to donate your time to help rebuild homes with Habitat for Humanity. Keep searching. Google Current will be back in 30. and this is Google Current. Now it's spring, which means spring break. Woo! And that means the internet is starting to look like a cheap hotel room in Cancun. People are getting wasted and stupid, and then they're checking out all the wasted and stupid people on the web. Now most of us have received viral emails with pictures of really wasted people in very embarrassing and uh, awkward positions. Oh, that's bad. Oh goodness, that is mean and hilarious. That one is uh, actually pretty creative. Oh, okay, wow, enough, okay, stop. Now, there are a bunch of sites collecting these photos, posting them, and getting people to send in more. There's also a whole lot of people searching Google for these sites. At the beginning of spring break season, searches for a site called partydamage.com shot way up. Party damage is, well, pretty self-explanatory. You got your standard photos of people drinking, you got your pictures of people drunk, and you also have really fascinating in-depth polls, like favorite place to have sex or your favorite kind of shot. If hedonism is your thing, stumble on over to waytoomany.com, which has the motto, join us in our fight against sobriety. Side has way too many pics of people passed out whose friends have access to magic markers. They also have videos showcasing all kinds of mayhem. You know, I never realized photos of drunk people were in such high demand, but clearly they are because these sites just keep on going. GettingSmash.com features, yep, pictures and videos, but also has a page for drunk confessions. Some are what you'd expect, and uh, some aren't. Here's a good one. Two weeks ago, me and my best friend got a little tipsy at the bar. 
She woke up next to the owner of the bar and I woke up next to his brother-in-law. Bad part, we are really good friends with their wives. If that was not bad enough, the very next week, same thing happened. This time, it was with their sons. Someone needs to quit drinking. Over on collegehumor.com, you can find people who could have used a spell checker before they got tattooed. Now, you do realize tattoos are permanent, right? Just checking. This one's great if you ever want to remember when and where you made your terrible mistake. But not all these sites want you to die of alcohol poisoning. Drunkoncampus.com, while posting pranks and bar tricks, also has a blood alcohol content calculator. You enter all kinds of info from number of drinks consumed to weight, and then depending on the BAC level, the site has different suggestions from you need to start drinking more to don't punch walls or glass. Starting at a level of 0.25, the site suggests you drink a glass of water and hit the sack now. And brace yourself for the ungodly hangover you'll experience tomorrow. So, lesson learned, binge drinking, bad, binge searching, go crazy. Cool Current, we'll be back in 30. Yeah.